ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಃ ಹರಿ ಓಂ ಸದಾಶಿವ ಸಮಾರಂಭಾ ಶಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಮಧ್ಯಮ ಅಸ್ಮದಾಚಾರ್ಯಪರ್ಯಂತ ವಂದೇ ಗುರುಪರಂಪರಾ ಶ್ರುತಿಸ್ಮೃತಿಪುರಾಣಾಲಯ ಕರುಣಾಲಯ ನಮಿ ಭಗವತ್ಪಾದಶಂಕರ ಲೋಕಶಂಕರ ಸದಾತ್ಮಧ್ಯಾನ ನಿರತ ವಿಷಯೇಭ್ಯ ಪರಾಂಮುಖ ನೌಮಿ ಶಾಸ್ತ್ರು ನಿಷ್ಣಾತ ಚಂದ್ರಶೇಖರ ಭಾರತಿ ಓಂ so in the last session we had looked at the commentary and the verse number 15 of the viveka chodamani now we will take up the next verse verse number 16 as we had mentioned in the previous sessions uh, verses 14 16 up till verse number 40 40 the topic of discussion is the preparatory steps that are required the preparation that is required before one can properly commence upon a study of advaita vedanta here in this particular verse the general qualifications are being mentioned in verse number 16 so let us read that verse medhavi purusho vidwan uha poha vichakshana adhikari atma vidyayam ukta lakshana lakshita so in this verse adi shankar bhagavad pada is saying that a person who is an adhikari for atma vidya must be qualified with certain qualifications so he must be a medhavi by medhavi what is meant is an individual who has the power of retention because when we are studying um, vedanta it is the study of scriptures and therefore there are a lot of concepts that we will be going through we will have to understand what is the development of the idea that is presented in the scriptures that requires the ability to receive the information that is one is sufficiently focused to listen to the teacher but one is also able to retain it because unless we are able to retain it we will not be able to go to the next level of the concept so for example if you are studying viveka chodamani we have to understand what has been taught in one particular class but we should also remember what has been taught in the previous classes when we come to this class so if we forget what is taught in the previous classes then every class you have to go back to the first class so we will not be able to progress and therefore uh, the expectation is that the student has some capacity for retention in olden times uh, all of this there were no textbooks or anything uh, and it wasn't the written word the communication of the teaching was purely oral so the student was expected to have memorized all the vedas and therefore when we are talking of any one particular mantra he will be able to immediately go to that uh, remember what the entire mantra is what the previous mantras were what the uh, mantras after were and therefore the uh, the expectation of the student was significant in terms of being able to remember everything now with the invention of the printing press etc the presence of books one does not require the same level of retention as far as vedanta is concerned however some memory is expected so that one can learn things because vedanta is about learning the scriptures and using the scriptures as a tool to know the self because there is no other pramana or means to know, know the self apart from scriptural knowledge therefore the ability to remember and retain that scriptures is what is being spoken about in the word medhavi the word vidwan refers to the ability to analytically study the scriptures because unlike other faith based systems advaita is not a faith based system in the sense that there is the expectation of shraddha in the scripture and in the words of the guru however it is not a blind faith what is required is the capacity to reason now in most faith based systems the first expectation is that you have to leave your intellect behind and completely surrender to the guru to ishwara that sharanagrati bhavam is emphasized in other indian philosophical systems but in advaita that is not the case the expectation is that the student is capable of using the intellect to understand what the limit of the intellect is 
and therefore that intellect is used to understand and analyze the scripture is used to understand and analyze one's own life is used to understand and analyze the priorities of life but that intellect is also ultimately used to understand what is the limitation of the intellect itself and therefore the expectation of the student is that there is a certain degree of analytical ability of intelligence to be able to process that information and rationalize what is going on and therefore that is what is being referred to by the word vidwan the word uha poha vichakshana uha means the ability to take what is required and apoha means the ability to discard what is not now in the scripture itself there is a lot of seeming contradiction there will apparently be statements that essentially contradict each other no we have to be able to interpret those statements understand those statements in one portion of the veda and the upanishad it will say that the knowledge of the self rather the self is beyond the mind for example in the taittiriya upanishad there is this famous mantra yato vacho nivartante apra apya manasa saha so it's talking about the atma and says it is that from which words withdraw from which the mind withdraws the mind is not able to reach it aprapya manasa sah you cannot attain it using the mind and elsewhere it says the knowledge of the self brahman can only be attained by the mind for example in the mundaka upanishad in the third adhyaya there is a mantra eshonuratma chetasa viditavya the subtle atma must be known by a purified mind so how do you re- reconcile these two seemingly contradictory statements now how you do that is based on tarka logic and mimamsa interpretation so both tarka and mimamsa logic and interpretation are very very important knowledge uh, requirements that a student must have he must know what aspect of something one must grasp and what aspect one must give up in the bhagavad gita there will be lots of stories in the first few chapter about arjuna's sadness about the various armies etc that is not fundamental to the teaching the teaching of the gita occurs from the second chapter onwards so we have to understand what are those elements of the scriptures which are talking about the critical things that must be grasped and there are other aspects which are merely incidental so for example there are modern studies on looking at sociological conditions from the time of the vedas using the vedas to understand what the kind of life people used to lead etc they are then trying to analyze whether is krishna a real person or not was there an avatara when did the mahabharata wars happened all of that are incidentally important people may have some interest in that however the purpose of the mahabharata and the vedas are not to reveal the the kind of lives that people were leading back then rather the purpose of the veda is to indicate things which are not understandable or graspable by other uh, means of knowledge by other pramanas the purpose of the bhagavad gita is not to talk about which army blew which conch and which warrior were belonged to which side that is not important what is important is the philosophy of the atma that it conveys and therefore uh, one of the requirements is the ability to know to be to discern what must be taken what must be understood and what must be given up what is the core and what is the non core and therefore this is what the uh, summary meaning of the this verse is we will look at the textual commentary provided by jagat guru shri ma chandrashekar bharati mahaswami so acharya says adhikarinam aashaste phalasiddhar visheshatah iti uktam adhikarinam prakrute kathayati medhavi ityadina the uh, 14th verse had talked about the 
Adhikari, the qualifications of the Adhikari by saying Adhikari na maashasthi, Phalasiddhar Visheshatah, the differences in the results obtained come down to the qualifications of the Adhikari. This is what was said in the 14th verse. Now, what those qualifications are, are being talked about in this verse beginning with the words Medhavi, etc. Dhir dharanavati medha iti koshat, shutartha dharana kshama buddhiman uchyate medha asyasti iti Yutpatya Medhavi Shabdena. By the word Medhavi, what is actually meant is the one who is endowed with Medha Shakti or the power of retention. So, what does Medha mean? He is quoting the Amarakosha, which essentially says Dhir Dharanavati Medha, the one who is able to sustain the flow of thought in a particular topic, he is able to retain that, is called Medha. So, by that what is meant is Shutartha Dharana Kshama Buddhiman, the one who is capable of being able to retain the imported meaning, the imputed meaning or the import of the Shruti, the primary meaning of the Shruti one is able to retain such an individual is called a Medhavi. Vidvaniti Adhita Kagya Kosha Vyakaranaha Uchyate. By the term Vidvan, what Acharya is translating that, he is saying is one who has done a study of the Kavya, poetry, like Raghuvamsham, etc. Kosha, the Amara Kosha, the dictionary, Vyakaranaha means who has understood grammar. Because you need to have all these skills. Uh, you need to have a sound understanding of Sanskrit grammar. One need to have, understand what the words actually mean. One needs to understand when one is talking about things in a figurative manner, etc., like how it happens in poetry. So all of these are important skills which are required in the analysis of scripture. And so that student must possess that. And then he says, Uha Poha Vichakshanaha. Uh, by this, what Uha Poha Vichakshanaha, we already saw what that meaning is. Acharya is translating, Etena Tarka Mimamsa Samskrita Buddhitpam Gamyate. By this, one essentially is referring to an intellect which has been Sanskritam, I mean here, here he is talking about which has been refined by the study of Tarka and Mimamsa. Now, many people may not have studied Tarka and Mimamsa formally, but to the extent one has the capacity to understand. So whatever is being taught in the, in the class is actually based on Tarka and Mimamsa. So essentially it is based on the study of the scriptures and the rules that have been laid out in the interpretation of the Veda in Purva Mimamsa. So, a student who has the capacity to understand Tarka, or, or logical reasoning, and Mimamsa, the science of textual interpretation, as been as has been laid out in Purva Mimamsa, such an individual is, is what is being referred to by Uha Poha Vichakshana. Padavakya Pramana Gyaha Iti Yavate. So, Padashastra refers to Vyakaranam, Vakya Shastra refers to Mimamsa, and Pramana Shastra refers to Nyaya. So, Nyaya being logical reasoning, Mimamsa being textual analysis, interpretation of the sentence meaning, to get the sentence meaning, and Padashastra means grammar. So, one uses grammar to understand what the words themselves mean, how they join with each other to form a sentence. One uses Vakya Shastra to arrive at the sentence meaning. So, Vakya Shastra meaning Purva Mimamsa, because what Purva Mimamsa does is it looks at, it gives tools with which to analyze the textual meaning of the Vedas. Now, when we are speaking with an individual, we can get the understanding of what the individual intends to say by questioning him. So, if we don't understand something, we can go back to the speaker and ask him doubts. With the Veda, you cannot do that. So, therefore, what Purva Mimamsa has developed is a very, very sophisticated system of analyzing sentences with a view at arriving at what is the true import or meaning of the sentences. The focus of Purva Mimamsa is to study the Vedas, understand the sentence meaning with a view of determining what is the correct procedure to perform a Yajyam. So that is the primary focus. What the role of the Veda is, what are the Vidhis and the Nishedhas? What should be done? What should be avoided? What is the correct prayogam? What is the correct procedure for performing a yajyam? But the application of that science of textual interpretation plays a very important role in Uttara Mimamsa or Vedanta also because the same Purva Mimamsa rules 
are used to analyze the sentence meaning in the Upanishads also. And therefore, it is using these Purva Mimamsa rules that Adi Shankara Bhagavad Pada in his Brahma Sutra Bhashyam proves beyond all doubt. And so does the Sutrakara Bhagavan Vedavyasa himself. Both of them use Purva Mimamsa rules in an Uttara Mimamsa context to arrive at Advaita Brahma being the ultimate import of not just the Upanishads but the Vedas themselves. The Karmakanda also exists to serve as a tool for the purification of the mind so that the individual is ready to enter Jnanakanda. And the way they conclude that is by means of the rules of textual interpretation that have been laid out in the Purva Mimamsa by Bhagavan Jaimini in the Purva Mimamsa Sutras, by Bhagavan Shabara, Shabara Swami in the Shabara Bhashyam, by great stalwarts such as Kumarala Bhatta and uh, Prabhakara Mishra uh, who wrote uh, commentaries on the Bhashya of Shabara Swami. So not only do you need to understand the, tech, the word meaning, the sentence meaning as arrived by Vyakarana and Purva Mimamsa respectively, one also needs to apply logic in understanding what the Shruti is saying and reconciling it with Vyavahara. And this is where Nyaya Shastra plays an important role and therefore it's called a Pramana Shastra. So where we use Nyaya is there are so many uh, apparent contradictions between what the Veda is teaching us and what Pratyaksha Pramana and all the other Pramanas are teaching us. So the Veda is saying that the Jiva and Brahma are one and the same that the world is mithya, that it is an unreal projection on the uh, one consciousness, that all that exists is consciousness. Now, when we hear that statement as the true import of the Veda, based on the understanding of the Vedic words and the interpretation of Vedic sentences, that leads us to a quandary. How is that possible? Now, the and the reconciliation of what Pratyaksham or perception is telling us with what the Veda is telling us, that is where Nyaya Shastra or logic comes into play. And through the application of logic, we are able to reconcile the apparent contradiction between the Pramanas. Now, how that contradiction is resolved, we will see as we go through the Viveka Chudamani. But what Jagadguru Srimad Chandrasekhara Bharati Mahaswami is saying is that a sound grounding in Vyakaranam, in Purva Mimamsa and Tarka is very helpful in overcoming the potential pitfalls that one will encounter as one is going through the uh, Advaita Shastra. And therefore, that is mentioned as a qualification here. Ukta Lakshana Lakshitah iti Ashtama Shloka Dharabhya Panchadasha Shlokam Adhyapati Shlokaihi Samasa Vyasa Bhyam Suchita Viveka Vairagya Shamadi Shatka Mumukshutva Rupa Sadhana Chatushtaka Sampanaha Ittarthaha So the word Ukta Lakshana Lakshitah means one who is uh, who possesses the stated qualifications and here by saying the stated qualifications he is referring to all those qualifications that have been enumerated in verses 8 to 15. Essentially, what it means is the one who has the fourfold uh, sadhana, the fourfold endowment, sadhana chatushtaya sampatti, being vivekam, the ability to discriminate between the real and the unreal, vairagyam being the dispassion for pleasures both in this world and in the other world. Mumukshutpam being a deep burning desire for liberation and Shamadi Shatka Sampatti or the sixfold characteristics of the mind being Shama, Dhamma, Uparama etc. So such a person is an Atma Vidyaya Madhikari. He is the apt candidate for the knowledge of the self. Atma Vidyaya Mathikari Atma Vidya Phalam Moksham Anubhavitam Arhati Ityarthaha. So, by the word Atma Vidyaya Mathikari, in the verse, what Adishankara Bhagavad Pada is saying is that 
such an individual who is qualified or who possesses all these qualities is the one who is capable of getting the benefit of atma vidya or the knowledge of the self the benefit of that atma vidya is moksha is liberation from the cycle of samsara so that is what is meant with that the commentary to verse number 16 is over we will look at verse number 17 now vivekino viraktasya shramadi gunashalinah mumukshore vahi brahma jignasa yogyata mata so here for the first time the sadhana chaturthaya sampatti has been explicitly stated in the viveka chodamani so what acharya shankara bhagavat pada is saying that it is only those people who are qualified with the sadhana chaturthaya sampatti only those people have the yogyata or the qualification or the capability for brahma jignasa or an enquiry into the nature of brahman now what are those qualifications viveka the discrimination virakta means vairagya or dispassion towards sensory objects shamadi gunashalinah means the one who is endowed with the qualities such as shama dama uparati etc shama means control of the mind dama means control of the senses uparati essentially means renunciation samadhanam means equanimity shraddha means a faith in the words of the scriptures and the guru so what have we seen shama dama uparama ah titiksha we missed out titiksha titiksha means the ability to withstand the dual duality such as heat cold so whatever is happening externally one is able to have the power to withstand it and be peaceful that whatever is coming will also go so one does not have to um uh, one does not feel too overwhelmed by facing hardship so titiksha means the ability to withstand that hardship so i'm only briefly talking about it because the viveka chodamani will give detailed explanations for each of these so essentially he is saying vivekinah means the one who is endowed with viveka uh, viraktah means the one who is endowed with vairagyam so viraga means vigatam raga so essentially one who is uh, who is devoid of of raga dvesha the uh, attraction and repulsion towards uh, objects shamadi gunashalinah means the one endowed with shamadama etc mumukshoh means the one who has tivra mumukshutvam or a desire for moksha with that we can go into the commentary of this verse uktani lakshanani sphutap pratipattage krodi krityah vivekinah iti jagadguru shri chandrashekara bharati mahaswami is saying that acharya shankara bhagavat pada in this verse seeks to clearly articulate what those qualifications are and that is happening in this verse starting with the word vivekinah continuing yadva uktam lakshanam jignasutvam ato vicharah kartavyo jignaso ratma vastunah ityatra jignasureva medha vitvadi visheshana vishtah atma vidya phala bhag idani jignasayam kasya adhikarah iti che purvam ashtama shloke vidwan sanyasta bahyartha sukha spruhasan upadishtartha samahitatma iti dashama shloke dhirehi iti shabda suchitasya sadhana chatushtaya sampatti visishtasya ityah vivekinah iti here jagadguru mahaswami is saying that the alternative explanation yadva is that the stated lakshana or the stated qualification for being the experiencer of atma vidya phalam the one who is capable of attaining moksha is one who is a jignasu or one who has an intense desire for liberation not only that in the verse number 15 it had been said ato vicharah kartavyo jignaso ho atmastunah uh, one must do enquiry uh, the and the person who must do an enquiry is the one who is a jignasu who is desirous of knowing what this atma vastu actually is and then in verse number 16 it had been said 
that the nature of the jignasu is such that he needs to be uh, medha vitvadi visheshana vishishta he needs to be endowed with qualifications such as being a medhavi being a vidwan being a uha poha vichakshana etc so only such an individual who is a jignasu and has these characteristics is capable of getting the result of atma vidya or moksha or only a jignasu can get moksha the next question is who can be a jignasu so he is saying idanim jignasayam kasya adhikara hai iti chet so we know that atma vidya can be attained by a jignasu so who can be a jignasu to answer that question jagadguru mahaswami is saying that in the 8th shloka the sadhana chatushtaya sampatti had been indicated so uh, that shloka was vidwan samyasta bahyartha sukas prahasam and then it ended with uh, tenopadishtartha samahitatma so that shloka is subtly hinting at the fourfold qualifications that are necessary for one to be a jignasu and only a jignasu can do a atma vichara it was said so the uh, what was indicated in the eighth shloka and that which was again reemphasized with the word dhira so even the word dhira is also indicative of the sadhana chatushtaya sampatti that word had occurred in the 10th verse so if you go back to the 10th verse let's look at what that verse says sanyasya sarva karmani bhavabandha vimuktaye jatyatam panditair dhiraihi atma abhyasa upasthitaihi so uh, this was in verse number 10 on page number page number page number 8 so on page number 8 at the bottom you can see that sanyasya sarva karmani bhavavanda vimuktaye yatyatam panditair dhiraihi atma abhyasa upasthitaihi so acharya is saying the sadhana chatushtaya sampatti which was indicated in verse number 8 and again indicated by the word dhira in verse number 10 is being explicitly split out and stated here in this verse number 17 and so and such an individual who is a sadhana chatushtaya sampatti sampanna the vishishta individual is the one who can be uh, the adhikari for jignasa or inquiry into brahman with that we will bring this session to a conclusion and take up the rest of the commentary in the next session om pur namadav pur namidam pur nat pur namadachate pur nasya pur namadaya pur namevavashishyate Om Shanti Shanti Shanti